Sexual assault is essentially any unwanted or unsolicited sexual activity. Um, if somebody approaches you, touches you in a manner that you don't want to be touched, that could constitute indecent or sexual assault. Any, um, say, coercion towards sexual activity, whether that be um, physical, financial, emotional, again, means you're not giving free um, consent or permission for the activity to occur, so that could also be sexual assault. When a sexual assault occurs, you have a number of options, which could be you choose to do nothing. It could be that you choose to go and see your usual healthcare provider and get support through them. You could choose to go to the police. If you chose to go down the path of having police involvement and forensic specimen collection, they could help facilitate that and possibly support you through that, but would always offer um, linkages and referrals to counselling and psychological support, which is crisis management, but also in an ongoing manner to help support you through whatever path you choose. In terms of disclosure, I had to be ready to talk about it. The perpetrator was known to my family and friends. It was, was hard for a long time. I didn't say anything to anybody. In some ways it was ha harder to talk to the police because I always had this vision of that they weren't going to be helpful, they weren't going to be believing, they wouldn't have time to just to deal with, with me. Uh, but they were really good. I initially, as I said, I went to the local police station. They were helpful. They gave me the number for the police soccer unit, and that is the um, police that deal um, with sexual assault. They had a lot of experience and understanding. I rang uh, the soccer unit. I spoke to um, a lovely lady. I could make the statement and nothing could go further if that's what I wanted. They gave me ample opportunity to decide what I want to do with my statement. The process of reporting uh, a, a sexual assault to police is that you would um, make contact with the police, um, whether that's by yourself turning up to a police station or um, through a phone call. Um, shortly thereafter, you'd be um, engaged with a, a member from a sexual assault unit. Those members are specifically trained in dealing with survivors of sexual assault and they will be well trained to attend to your immediate needs as well as your ongoing needs um, throughout the investigation. Some of the barriers, unfortunately, are societal. There are a lot of myths out there that basically make um, people who've experienced sexual assault reluctant to disclose. It could be fear of people not believing what's happened to them. And I guess in some ways, one of the most common things is that sexual assault occurs by an unknown person. More often than not, is someone that you know and is close to you. So there are often concerns around safety if you're going to be doing those sorts of disclosures. So people usually really consider it for a long time before they actually make that disclosure. As a survivor, your right is to feel safe in the community. When you go home, when you go to work, when you go out at night, it's your right to feel safe. And part of that feeling safe um, may be that you, you need to tell your story either to the police or to a counsellor or to, you know, a friend. Because sexual assault is an act of violence and it's usually very disempowering for the person who experiences it. So for them, as I feel it's important as a healing part for them to be given back control and to drive what happens for them from here on in.